We're the busiest venue in the world and we're a 24 hour building that doesn't stop. We stage 401 performances a year in the main auditorium and a thousand in other spaces throughout the hall. A venue is nothing without good quality sound. We do everything you could possibly imagine. With that variety of shows that we're doing, 400 shows, you've got many different PA systems coming in and out of the hall, the challenging acoustics in the hall, and actually there isn't time for a building with over 5,000 seats to actually walk the building, to listen to everywhere. We wanted the audience to get the same experience everywhere. To do that, and the only way we thought we could do that, was bring the sound in house. We wanted to appoint an acoustician who could work with us and understand the acoustics of the hall. So the very first thing we did uh, was to bring Sandy Brown in. When we started with the hall, we wanted to create an acoustic model. And working closely with DNB, we basically provided our acoustic modeling information to enable the sound system to be developed. We decided we wanted to work with people in the industry who had worked at the Royal Albert Hall. So we engaged advocates. We had you know, people from different disciplines. I think we all fought our various corners. And some people, advocates who had come into the hall with rock acts were interested in producing high SPL and making sure the coverage would work for that. My interest was very specifically shows with a lower level of amplification. Intelligibility was really my, my major concern. With so many type of events and the challenging acoustics in the hall, it required a new inspirational approach to sound design. Primarily the main push that we had was about trying to separate the room into different layers in order to uh, not overexcite the room but really control the room. A large amount of the iterations we went through were about actually trying to physically fit speakers into the room in terms of uh, motor points through the mushrooms, up into the roof and through the structure and then finding space actually for the motor itself in what is already a crowded space in the roof. The prime thing we changed from the test events was we added one more line array for the circle um, to even the coverage out and to be able to move the speakers that little bit nearer to the circle to increase the direct sound. For the arena floor at the front, we have the larger rock and roll set. Then we have a smaller, more classical set. We then have the choir stalls where we have a set of front fills, but also a small hang of line array either side um, for the main coverage. Within the main arena floor stalls and the boxes, we have three hangs of line array in a left, centre, right configuration, plus two outfill hangs of line array. For the circle, we have seven hangs of six deep line arrays, uh, covering from the first seat of the circle up to the back seat of the circle. In the gallery, we have 23 point source speakers, one speaker per gallery opening, on the subwoofers in the room, we have one mono hang and then two uh, large subwoofers underneath the stage for ground support. So obviously working in a building as big as this, um, even just undertaking surveys, walking around cable routes, looking at um, setting out of where speakers are going and positions and even just going up to the roof, um, that is a long undertaking. It takes um, a huge amount of time just to, to get all that information pulled together. The installation had to be delivered against the, the backdrop of what was actually the Albert Hall's busiest year ever. The result really was that, that we had to deliver it over about a six month period of almost entirely overnight work. The design for the boxes uh, came about from being sat in a box for myself and looking into the room and feeling like my experience was that I'm, I'm an outsider. So it's two approaches. One is there's a, a small loudspeaker in front on the roof that's a delay loudspeaker. The other is two speakers at the rear of the box that are acting as surrounds. On the circle level, we needed to install 32 new amplifiers which drive all the loudspeakers in the boxes. The, the final approach we set on involved building three new amplifier cupboards around the circle all of which were installed by the joiner, Adrian Eves Joinery, who did an absolutely fantastic job of making sure that all the, the little details just matched the existing architecture. We're really, really proud of the achievement of the system we have designed and developed working with DMB. We probably thought it would be used for about maybe 40% 
of our shows in the autumn season. It's been used for so many shows and by the end of December, 96% of shows that have been at the hall were using our system. I remember in the very early stages when I presented this to the board, I had a slide and it was a slide of Twitter that had lots of negative comments. I now have a different slide and that has many positive comments of people saying how good the sound is at the Royal Albert Hall. And that was before we announced this amazing project. So for me, Yes, I think it sounds great, but our audiences are now commenting about it without us even asking them. So the success of it is the audience, and the audience are really happy with what we've done, and I hope that continues. The sound system obviously is bespoke for the Royal Albert Hall, so it means that everyone is getting the best possible sound experience, and it just sounds fantastic wherever you're sitting. The difference now is the sound is crisp, present, and ubiquitous. It just works so much better. So it's a credit to D&B that they've got this system which can do all these things for all different performance opportunities and different nights. It's amazing. I think the system now is something that everyone can be proud of. You know, and it's not just the sound of the loudspeakers, it's where they're placed now. I mean, I would say that was an, an important um, consideration. I think we, we have done uh, remarkably well, better than our expectations. Actually, when we did Nutcracker last time, and uh, somebody came over and said, oh, the, the uh, maestro would like to see you. And, you know, just tears of joy. He said it was just, it, he said it sounded just fantastic. You'd hear all of the orchestra, which he, he had never uh, heard before. It was really a once in a generation opportunity to get this right. And due to the team involved, great decision making, great decisions on the compromises that had to be made through this process as well. I look back now and think, yeah, we got it, we nailed it, and uh, I'm very proud of, of what everybody has done on this project.